Hello, Hoven. I am here to tell you how to read Genesis 1. Genesis 1 is a metaphor that Moses uses to make it easier for us to understand the true story of the creation. Yes, I believe that the that Genesis 1 is a true story and that it really happened and that the creation really happened. I do not believe that it really took six literal 24-hour days. The six days thing is a metaphor that Moses decided to use in order to make it easier for our human minds to understand the creation days and the order in which they took. They actually... The creation actually happened in the order that Moses laid it out, but it did not take six literal 24-hour days. That is a metaphor. Something being a metaphor does not diminish the fact that it is a true story. For instance, my brother can use a metaphor in the true story of him breaking his leg, and... The true story of him breaking his leg is still a true story because he really did break his leg. The fact that he used a metaphor in this story does not diminish the fact that he really did break his leg. Using a metaphor does not diminish the fact that it is a true story. Revolutionary idea. I do not understand why creationists seem to have a problem with metaphors in the Old Testament, but no problem whatsoever with metaphors in the New Testament. They have no problems when you use metaphors in the book of Revelation. But if you use metaphors in the book of Genesis, they scream at you. Something being a metaphor does not diminish the fact that it is still a true story. Yes, Genesis 1 is a true story. Yes, it really did take place in the sequence that Moses laid it out. No, it did not take place in six literal 24-hour days. No, the earth is not 6,000 years old. No, those genealogies are not meant to be interpreted as a mathematical equation that tells you the age of the earth. That's Genesis 5 and 11, in case you're wondering. It should be obvious that this is the case. But often, they don't get it. For instance, another thing. In order for something to be a compromise, it must come after the whole thing that you are compromising to. Old Earth creationism came long before Darwin which is supposedly the thing that we're compromising to, the theory of evolution, Darwin. That was 19th century. The founding of Old Earth Creationism was thanks to St. Augustine, 5th century A.D. 19th century? 5th century. I'm thinking 5th century came before 19th century, so no... Old Earth creationism is not a compromise to evolution. Just want to lay that out for you. And here's another thing. When Christ comes back in the book of Revelation, when Christ comes back in the second coming, he will not be restoring this creation. He'll be starting from scratch. I don't believe in restoration. I believe in new creation. The reason this creation was created in the first place was so that God could see who belongs in the next creation. It was a testing ground. And whoever passes this test goes on to heaven. Whoever fails this test goes on to hell. And if you never had a chance to accept Christ during your life here on earth, you will be given that chance when Christ comes back. If you never had the chance. Not if you had the chance but rejected him. 
if you never had the chance in the first place, you will be given that chance. I also believe in purgatory. Purgatory is the purification room that is referred as, to as Hades in the book of Revelation. Purification by fire. That's what, ha the, that's what Hades is referring to in the book of Revelation. The lake of fire is referring to hell. The second death is referring to hell. Not Hades. Hades is referring to the purification room, or purgatory. The word purgatory comes from the word purgatorium, which comes from the Latin Vulgate, which is what Hades is translated to in the Latin Vulgate. So, Genesis 1, metaphor, does not diminish the fact that it is a true story. Yes, Genesis 1 is a true story. Yes, the creation really did happen, but it's written in a metaphor. And that is how it happened. There. Good. That's how you read Genesis 1. Open. It's a metaphor. Christ is coming back. No restoration. Brand new creation. Okay, that's all I have to say. Bye. Hello, Hoven. Moses uses this metaphor of the six days again in Exodus 20.11. Yes, it's a metaphor. He's comparing the six days of creation and the one day of rest that he used earlier in the book of Genesis to the six days of work we should do and then the one day of rest. This is a comparison. He is not saying that the creation took a literal six 24-hour days. He is saying that we should work six days and then rest one day, just like he laid out the order of the creation. Metaphor. Not literal six 24-hour days. The creation was not... Genesis 1 did not take place in six literal 24-hour days. The six days thing is a metaphor. Then you have the one day of rest, also a metaphor which explains why Day 7 is never closed. Because it hasn't ended. Metaphor. Okay? Also, I think you young Earth creationists really need to start, to start and think about anthropomorphizing animals. We really shouldn't be doing that. We, we really shouldn't be putting human feelings on things that aren't human. You shouldn't anthropomorphize animals. Anthropomorphization of animals is one of the root causes of why young earth creationism exists in the first place. The animals are not meant to be anthropomorphized. They're not human. We shouldn't treat them as though they are human. Yes, we should treat animals with respect. Yes, we shouldn't abuse animals. I am not saying that animals should be abused. Yes, animals do have rights. No, those rights should not be equal to that of humans. Anthropomorphization of animals is a problem. And we don't need to be anthropomorphizing animals. You shouldn't be overly attached to animals that aren't nefesh. 
Nefesh are animals that you can tame or domesticate. Nefesh is a Hebrew word. It refers to animals that you can tame or domesticate. If you can't tame the animal or domesticate the animal, then it isn't nefesh. This means that any animal that existed before humans did, 200,000 years ago, automatically can't be nefesh. I am not saying that any animal that came into existence before humans can't be nefesh. I am saying that any animal that hasn't existed during the time that humans have existed can't be nefesh. So that excludes dinosaurs. Because they weren't around during human existence. Dinosaurs can't be nefesh. You can't tame dinosaurs. Don't get attached to dinosaurs. I know the kid in you loves dinosaurs, but stop getting attached to dinosaurs. They're not nefesh. Crocodiles are nefesh. Rhinos are nefesh. Hippos are nefesh. By the way, that's the behemoth, a hippo, the leviathan, a crocodile, and... The unicorn, a rhinoceros. Just thought I would lay that out for you. Job was not talking about dinosaurs. The behemoth is a hippo. Not a dinosaur. The leviathan is a crocodile. Not a dinosaur. The unicorn is a rhinoceros. I, I know you also agree with that one. And the dragon, also not a dinosaur. The dragon is a dragon. Dragons were, were probably a real animal. I mean, just how can all these cultures have a myth about dragons and there not be a real animal that we call a dragon. Komodo dragon is the last surviving dragon. I just don't understand how so many different cultures can have a myth about dragons and there not be any real animals that that myth is related to. There has to be a hint of truth there somewhere. Anyway, that's what I think. So, Exodus metaphor. Exodus 2011 is a metaphor and a comparison between the creation days and our work week. It, it's not saying that the creation days were literal 24-hour days. They weren't. The Exodus 2011 is saying that we should work six days and rest one day. It's saying that we should celebrate the Sabbath. Not that the creation was literal six 24-hour days. It wasn't. The creation took longer than six literal 24-hour days. It took billions of years. Okay? Get it straight. Accept science. Accept common sense. The Earth is not 6,000 years old. The universe is not 10,000 years old. It's older. Much, much, much older. Billions of years older. Get it straight. Learn something. Learn how to read metaphors. The Bible uses metaphors all the time. It's littered with metaphors. The fact that it's using metaphors does not diminish the fact 
that it's a true story. You can use metaphors and still have a true story. I direct you to my earlier example about my brother breaking his leg and using a metaphor to explain the fact that he broke his leg. The fact that he broke his leg is not diminished by the fact that he's using a metaphor to explain that he broke his leg and explain how breaking his leg really, really hurt. The fact that he broke his leg is still a true story. Just because he uses a metaphor to explain it does not diminish the fact that it's a true story. So, Genesis 1, true story. Exodus 20.11, comparison between our work week and Genesis 1, and how, he laid out, and how Moses has laid out the metaphor of Genesis 1. Moses is not saying that the creation was six literal 24-hour days. And in Matthew, when Jesus talks about marriage and says that it started with Adam, that the creation of marriage started with Adam, he's talking about marriage, not the creation. He's not saying that he thinks that the creation was six literal 24-hour days. He, he, he's saying that marriage started with Adam. He said nothing about the length of creation. He just said marriage started with Adam. He's talking about marriage. That's what Jesus was talking about. Marriage. Okay? Learn something, Hoven. Bye.